In this lesson, we're gonna focus on infiltration. Now infiltration is the movement of water through the soil surface into the soil. And it is a vital part of the hydrologic cycle, affecting the amount and distribution of runoff. It is also particularly important for understanding water application dynamics in irrigation studies and bioremediation schemes. Now first, we're gonna define the difference between infiltration and percolation. Now here, Infiltration is the entry of water into the soil surface while percolation is the downward movement of water through the soil profile. Now if we're gonna make sense of that, let's have here infiltration and percolation. Let's say these are dams and then this is our soil. Now again, infiltration is the entry of water into the soil surface. And so if this is the soil surface, water is gonna enter the soil surface. However, the movement just stays in here. However, when water enters the soil surface, and then moves down until it joins the groundwater, uh, this is the groundwater table or GWT, that's what we call percolation. While seepage, although not included here, water is gonna move this way. It enters the soil and then goes back up here. Now we have the factors affecting infiltration or aqueous materials. First, we have the soil in which the infiltration rate is influenced by the following factors. The number, size, and the continuity of soil properties. While for pore size, it's affected by the soil particle size, the degree of aggregation, and the arrangement of soil particles. And then we have vegetation and soil organic matter, which provides protection and reduces surface sealing. This also affects infiltration rates. And then we also have soil water content. And then essentially, for dry soils, infiltration is the highest. And then some clays within the soil will tend to get bigger as they get wet. And then these volume changes will reduce the numbers and sizes of soil pores, which in turn will reduce infiltration. Now for the infiltration capacities, for high clay soils, it's usually very low. While for shallow soils or clay soils, it's only low, while medium for sandy loam or silt. And then for deep sands, the infiltration capacity is classified as high. Now why is this? This happens because sand particles are very large while silt is considered medium and then clay has the smallest particles and so it's much easier for water to infiltrate sand because it has large particles and so this is the movement for sand and then this is the movement for silts while this is the movement for clays now let's talk about infiltration capacity it is the maximum rate at which a given time can absorb water. Take note here that infiltration only takes place at capacity rates only when the intensity of rainfall I equals or exceeds Fp. And so, when I is greater than or equal to Fp, the infiltration rate is equal to Fp. However, when I is lesser than Fp, then the actual infiltration rate is lesser than Fp. And so F is just assumed to be equal to I. It is also important to note that the infiltration of a soil is high at the beginning of a storm and has an exponential decay as the time elapses. In this particular video, we're gonna focus on the Horton infiltration capacity curve. Now the Horton infiltration capacity curve is a graphical representation of how the rate of infiltration changes over time during a rain event. It's named after the hydrologist Robert E. Horton who developed it in the early 20th century. Now the curve typically starts at a high infiltration rate and then decreases over time as the soil becomes saturated. Eventually, it levels off at a constant infiltration rate which represents the maximum rate at which water can enter the soil. Now this maximum rate is referred to as the saturated hydraulic conductivity or the saturated infiltration rate. But in this video, we'll refer to it as the steady state infiltration rate, which we'll discuss later. Now the curve is often depicted as a graph with infiltration rate on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. It's commonly used in hydrology and soil science to estimate the amount of water entering the soil during rainfall events and to predict runoff. Today we're gonna learn how to leverage Excel to develop Horton's infiltration equation. Now we have Horton's equation defined as Fp equals Fc plus F sub O minus Fc multiplied by E to the power of negative kT. Now we have Fp as the infiltration capacity at any time t and then we have Fo as the initial infiltration capacity at time equals zero and then Fc is gonna be the final steady state infiltration wherein the infiltration rate will already become constant and then we have k to be Horton's decay coefficient. Now, from our measurement devices, we're able to obtain the cumulative infiltration depth at the time they are obtained. And so these first two columns will define the raw data. Now, we're first going to define the time interval. For the first row, it's just going to be equal to the time since start, while for the succeeding rows, 
it's gonna be the current time since start minus the time since start of the previous one or the previous row. And so to do this for the remaining rows, just double click once you see the plus sign to follow the formula. Now that we have the time interval, we're gonna fill up the incremental depth in interval. It will follow the same pattern as the time interval where the first row is going to be the cumulative infiltration depth within the first row while the succeeding rows will be the current cumulative infiltration depth minus that of the previous one. And so double click again to fill up the remaining rows. Now we're gonna convert the time since start into hours. But first notice here that the incremental depth for the last two rows are the same as well as the time interval for the last two rows along the time since start column. Now this means that at this point, the infiltration rate will practically be constant. Now we will see that later once we will compute the infiltration rate. And so to convert the time since start into hours, we're gonna divide it by 60. And then just double click or drag it down. Now for the infiltration rate, we're gonna divide the incremental depth by the time interval in hours. And so this means that we're gonna convert the time interval in minutes into hours. And so just to show you the conversion, why we multiplied it by 60, we first have the infiltration rate as cm per minute, considering our initial data. However, we're gonna convert minutes into hours by multiplying the expression by 60 minutes is to 1 hour. Now for the last column, we're gonna define ln of fp minus fc. In our definition, fp is the infiltration capacity at any time t, while fc is the final steady state infiltration capacity where the infiltration capacity already becomes constant. Now looking at the infiltration rates, in the last two rows, the infiltration rate fp has already achieved a steady state as it is 3.24 for both of the rows. Therefore, 3.24 is the steady state infiltration capacity considering our data. And so we're gonna type in ln of fp minus fc. And then since fc is a constant term, we're gonna use a fixed cell reference. And so to do that efficiently, instead of adding dollar signs before the letter and the number, just highlight the cell and then press F4. It will automatically add the dollar signs for you. And so we're gonna drag this down and then notice that for the last two rows, we have an indeterminate number. Now this is because ln of zero is undefined. And so we're just gonna remove that. Now, for the first part, copy the columns of the time in hours, the infiltration rate FP, and the cumulative infiltration depth. Now this is so that we can plot the infiltration rate and cumulative infiltration variation with time. Just copy the columns and choose paste special and then pick values only. Just press the 1, 2, 3 icon. And so this is essentially what we are trying to form. And so to plot that, just highlight the three columns and then go to insert. Look for the charts icon and then pick the second one. And so we now have this chart that just looks like what I have shown earlier. And so here, the blue curve defines the infiltration rate while the orange one defines the cumulative infiltration depth. Now, we're first gonna change the data series for the cumulative infiltration depth. Let's choose the secondary axis so that it will consider time as its independent variable. Now, as you can notice, the infiltration rate decreases with time until it practically becomes a straight line or constant. The infiltration depth, on the other hand, accumulates over time. And so we are now going to determine the values of the parameters in Horton's equation. Let's first copy the column for time expressed in hours, and we'll also copy the column for the values of ln of fp minus fc. This is so we can determine the value of k and f sub o. And so once that's done, we need to highlight the two columns and then go to insert, find the chart icon, and then choose the first one, which is the scatter plot. Now, click on any point on the curve and then left click to add a trend line. Choose linear, which is checked by default, and then check the box for the display equation on chart. This is so we can fit the best straight line through the plotted points. And so we now have the equation of the line in the point slope form, where y is equal to mx plus b. Here, the positive value of the slope m will define k in Horton's equation, while the intercept is going to define ln of fo minus fc. Now, since we know that e raised to ln of a number will just be the number itself, if we have e raised to ln of fo minus fc, we're going to get fo minus fc. And so again, we have k as 2.6571, which is the slope of the line. And the intercept 2.8868 is the value of ln of fo minus fc. And so e raised to ln of fo minus fc 
that's gonna give us FO minus FC. Now, to type E or Euler's constant in Excel, use the EXP function. By default, we have EXP, open parenthesis, and then the number to which we are raising E, and then close parenthesis. And so we already have F sub O minus FC. To get FO, we're just gonna add FC to the expression F sub O minus FC, so that we can cancel FC. Now, as defined earlier, FC is the final steady state infiltration rate, which was 3.24. Now, we already obtained all the constants in Horton's equation. And so we're gonna plug in these values so that we can form the equation that's gonna define the cumulative infiltration rate at any given time. Let's copy the equation above so we can directly substitute the values. So we have FP equals FC, which is 3.24, and then plus F sub O minus FC, which is 17.9358204, and we have determined k to be 2.6751. Now, since the time t is our independent variable, we're gonna retain that one. Next, we're gonna plot the values of fp using our equation, which will give us a good estimate of fp at any given time. Now, this is what engineers use for forecasting so that they won't need to use measurement devices all the time, but still get a good approximation of the infiltration capacity. But the main purpose of forming this equation is to analyze how water infiltrates into the soil over time, especially during rainfall events. This information helps engineers design effective drainage systems, predict runoff and erosion, and assess the potential for flooding. Ultimately, this equation enables engineers to better manage water resources and mitigate the impacts of urbanization and land use changes on the hydrological cycle. And so let's plug in the equation of FB. We have FC equal to 3.24, F sub O minus FC equal to 17.93, and K equal to 2.6751. Now since these are constant values, we're gonna use absolute cell referencing. Again, just press F4 once you highlight the cell so that you can add dollar signs. And then let's add the values of the time in hours to the left side of the active cell so that we'll be able to reference that for t. So we have the time in hours on the left column and so since we have referenced that one, let's drag the equation of fp down up to the last row. And so we're gonna obtain the estimated values of fp by Horton's infiltration capacity equation. And so if we're gonna compare this with our raw data, you'll be able to observe that the values are quite near. Now, the next question that arises is, how can we use this equation to estimate the total volume of infiltration? If we're gonna go back to the graph of infiltration capacity versus time, the area under the curve is gonna be the total volume of infiltration, with the values of time on the x-axis as our limits. In here, zero is our lower limit, and the upper limit is the time of interest. And so we have FP as the total volume of infiltration, but one thing to note here is that the volume of infiltration is measured by a dimensional unit, in this case, CM. So to get the area under the curve, we will use integration from time equals zero to time equals t, and then we'll integrate the function of fp. And so we're gonna try to solve the total volume of infiltration when time is equal to 2.17. And so plugging in what we have here into our calculators, we're gonna obtain 13.715. And so capital F sub p is gonna be the total volume of infiltration, and then the unit is in cm. Now, in order to check our answer, we actually have a derived formula for FP, which you will be able to see in hydrology books. We have FP equals FC times T plus F sub O minus FC over K multiplied by 1 minus E to the power of minus KT. Plugging in our values earlier, we will still be able to get 13.715. However, if you have a calculator that can solve definite integrals, then it's easier to just type the equation of FP.